morning, everyone. Hello. We're here Sunday morning, and uh, as a kind of a temporary change, we're just trying it out. Probably go back to Fridays. And uh, anything that we say is not meant to give you a cure or diagnosis. Just, this is basically for your own research, for you and your doctor to look at to see if you want to, um, you know, take it or leave it. How take about that? Take it or leave it. Good. Take it or leave it. What so else do we want to mention? We, we want to mention that um, today I'm wearing white. So, uh, and I'm wearing a big so you pattern. You probably should not be wearing white on a camera. These are the two things you're never supposed to do when you're on camera. Unless you're wearing green. White and a bold print. So we... You know what we should do? <laughs> we should actually wear green on the green screen and just see what we look like. We're just going to be two heads. Well, yes. they're bosses so we can't yell at them. Huh? What, what is he talking about? I said, you're the bosses, so we can't yell at they, you for not dressing right. It's terrible. I, I know. I know. So, right. whatever. So here we are yeah. in white and a bold print. But it's Sunday, so we've already broken all the rules. And, um, but yeah, I see why they say no big print. It's like, Rrr. Okay. I guess that was unnecessary. But. <laughs> all right, well. Okay. Um, let's go. Let's, let's go right to the calls. Um, yeah. Aunt Juan's been waiting patiently from New York. Um, you had a question. I think you said you're too skinny, and how do you gain weight? Are you there? Yes. Uh, hi, Dr. Berg. Hi. Um, so, yeah, I, ca I called a couple of months ago because I, I had been doing keto and IF. Yeah. Uh, but my cholesterol and remnant cholesterol had gone up significantly, and you said it was likely because of my of liver or gallbladder issues. I followed your advice. I think it worked because I saw improvements in my digestion. But... In the process, I lost a lot of weight, mm -hmm. even though I was already pretty skinny. Mm -hmm. uh, I added like some cheat meals, like you know, like half a pizza with chicken parm with no dessert, like once or twice a week. But I, I don't really know how to gain, you know, some weight in a healthy way, basically. Got it. And how often are you doing intermittent fasting? Uh, I was doing it every day. This week, I did it only like three, four times. Okay. So this is what I would recommend. Um, Couple things. Um, definitely keep in no snacking for sure. Uh, try to go to two meals a day, but but the, really to prevent the weight uh, loss and then try to gain, you're going to have to increase your calories for sure. So each of those meals, and it's difficult because your hunger goes down. So each of those meals need to be quite beefy, no pun intended. Probably about um, at least 1,500 calories per meal. Um, but And then the other thing is you want to keep your carbs, keep the quality in, you know, but do the carbs, maybe 50, maybe 60 grams in, instead of 20. That's really, really hard because sometimes when people slip into the keto, they, they start going up with the protein and they don't go up with the carbs enough. So, I mean, if you want to maintain your weight. So go with the carbs. Maybe so you can do probably um, berries, something like that. Um, and then... And then you want to add exercise as well, heavier weights um, to be able to maintain your muscle. So that's kind of what you want to do. Um, yeah, if you, go, if you go off and do the cheat meals, it throws up the blood sugars and not the best way to do it, but it's really going to have to maximize your carbs without going too high and do more calories. Good question, though. And then let's go to uh, Fat, Fatma. Fatma from Tennessee. Are you there? Yeah, hello. Hello, hi. Yes, hi, Dr. Berg. Thank you for answering my call. Um, my question is, um, I want to start keto, but the problem is um, for the protein part, I've n never really eaten meat or eggs, um, mainly because since I was little, I couldn't really tolerate meat or eggs. I would either get nauseous or throw up after I ate it. And so now I weigh 89 pounds um, because I uh, have an illness, and I want to start eating meat and eggs, but I can only tolerate a very, very little amount of lamb or and chicken I can eat, but lamb is the only meat that I can only tolerate a little bit. Okay. And so I, yeah, that I want to eat meat, but I don't know what I, else I can do to incorporate more protein and gain more weight. Right. Tell me about um, what uh, disorder or condition do you have? I have rheumatoid arthritis, and I am bed-bound. Okay. I can't walk. 
Did that happen mm -hmm. after a certain stress event or something, infection or something? Um, my rheumatoid? Yeah. Uh, um, it ha not really. I mean, I was stressed, but I, it ju I just woke up one day feeling fatigue, and then from there on, I, it went downhill. Um, I don't. I, I haven't been under control for my RA, um, so it's been really tough in that part. Um, and so then after I start stop walking, I lost all my weight. So, okay. um, yeah. Okay. So here's what I would recommend. Um, definitely, you're on the right track with uh, lowering your carbs and doing intermittent fasting. Those two are going to help your inflammation. It's going to help the RA for sure. Um, as far as the digestion of meat, I think you're going to be probably safer with eggs, but make sure that they're high quality and make sure that you take the tain hydrochloride, which is a natural acidifier, before you consume them, so that way you get a complete digestion. That being said, um, next week I have something new that I'm going to be releasing, and it's um, keto aminos. And let me just explain what that is, because when you consume meat or eggs or dairy, whatever, and you're getting the protein, you really only get a very small fraction of that, maybe 30%. It could vary, you know, 37%, go down to 15% or 17%. That's what you're extracting as far as amino acids that you need to kind of heal your body. Um, this blend of amino acids are, that I'm going to put out there is very interesting because n you're going to absorb it 100%, all the essential. There's nothing going to waste, so it's very efficient. It's very good for rebuilding muscle. It's good for uh, recovery. Um, there's been a lot of research behind it. And I think that would actually give you like what you need to repair. Uh, but I think you need more stomach acid. Um, but, you know, experiment with that. And uh, stay in communication because I think I'd like to know how you're doing over the next uh, weeks or so and then we can actually follow up. Awesome. All right, Karen. Where are people today? Where are they calling from? Where are they oh I mean, gosh. asking a question from? Sunday is a good day. Yeah. We have people so far, first of all, all over the United States, of course. Canada, Florida, Louisiana, Texas, Tennessee, everywhere. Yeah. Worldwide, Ethiopia, Slovenia, India, Malaysia, Iraq, Philippines, Holland, Australia, Israel, Singapore, Spain, Finland, Pakistan, wow. United Kingdom, Hong Kong, Greece, Sweden. Wow. And I'm not done. Wow, that's amazing. So, welcome from everywhere. This is, we love this. Wow, this is incredible. Well, um, this is good. This is good. This yeah. is good data. Yeah, um, I have some questions, too. Go ahead. Go for it. All right. And by so the way, what I'm going to be talking about throughout the day, yeah. I'm going to focus on one topic, and that is stubborn weight. People that have that last 20 pounds, I want to lose it. So I'm going to be covering that. The if last you guys 10 pounds. That's the hardest is the 10 pounds. We'll talk a about the 10, the 20, the 30. We'll Did talk about the 10, that? the 20, the whatever. Yeah. See, all those hands went up. Yeah. So we'll, we'll talk about that throughout the show. So if you're watching and you're thinking about clicking off, you might not want to do that today. Mm. Okay, go ahead. That's what are the teaser. questions? Uh, here's one. Do the nutritional needs of a body change as you do fasting? That's a good question. Um, good question. They, it, it does. It does. In fact, your body um, becomes more conservative. It actually adapts and it, it actually you don't require as many nutrients. Mm. Um, you definitely use up your reserve though. So that's the situation. So you do need electrolytes and B vitamins as the primary thing. Now, why do you need electrolytes and B vitamins? Electrolytes are vital for the heart, to keep the heart in rhythm, to keep the heart going, uh, for fluid balance and even energy, especially potassium and magnesium. But then the B vitamins are involved um, in so many different biochemical reactions like making tissue. This is why, like, let's say, for example, you're a little low in the Bs, and, uh, but you're not completely low. You could show hair loss because your body's going to shunt what it does have to vital functions. Mm. So, so if you have hair loss or nail changes, we know that you just need to uh, increase your B vitamins for sure. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, then that's the answer to another question, too, because someone was asking about thinning hair. 
I just killed two birds. So you, you did the two bird thing. I like yeah. it. So here's another one. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be your favorite question of the day. Yeah. Dennis asks, he has muscle pain in his whole body and fatigue after eating bread. What's going on? That's weird. You mm -hmm. shouldn't have muscle pain after eating gluten. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe bread. you have, yeah, bread, you have gluten, right? It's gluten sensitivity. Mm. So here's the thing. If you're doing bread, realize that the grains are highly inflammatory for the majority of the population. Sometimes, or most of the time, it's going to be the gluten problem. It could be a gluten intolerance. It could, and the allergies are hard to detect on that sometimes, too. There's other things in the wheat, too, uh, especially like a glyphosate, which is a herbicide that it's, it's mm -hmm. creates problems. So the point is that um, we basically are trying to get everyone off the bread, okay? Because we're doing recommending keto and intermittent fasting. You might be new, so you might want to just, you know, learn how to do it. I have stuff on my website, drbird.com, to show you step by step of what to eat. Um, but um, if you have inflammation and you give up your grains, um, it should go away. The other thing that if you do intermittent fasting, your inflammation should go way even more um, because all the, the frequency of meals and the sugars and all that, that keeps you in an inflamed state. But definitely the gluten is at the top of the list. And people will go, oh, I'm going to gluten free. But there's other, then now you're, you're actually eating food that turns into sugar fast. So we want to get rid of the grains. Mm. Now, I, you made me think of a question. So pain is an inflammatory symptom, yeah. right? You're talking about inflammation. Yeah. What are other symptoms of inflammation? Any of the itis, uh, bursitis, tendonitis, um, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis. Um, bursitis. Iriditis. Like What's that? Uh, iris, like uh, inflammation mm. of the eye. Um, I mean, you basically can have inflammation of any single, every single organ and tissue of the entire body. Um, hepatitis. What about liver? Cellulitis. Same thing. Is it just inflammation? Yeah, of your cellulite. Wow. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, and here's one more question before we go back to the phones is, would you ever say that using phentamine is acceptable when you're transitioning into keto? Mm -hmm. No, no, you don't need that. You don't need that. That's a, it's a, it's going to stimulate your nervous system in a bad way. And uh, yes, it gets rid of hunger, but it creates some um, long-term effects. If you, if you look that up, you're going to find that it's going to create a lot of issues with um, your metabolism down the road. So it's a quick type thing where, oh yeah, it's working. You don't, what, we'd be, what would be better is if you do um, our fasting tea, which actually will help your hunger more than anything that mm. I know. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, I do want to talk initially uh, about um, this situation with this uh, stubborn weight that people have. Um, so for those of you that are trying to gain weight, just ignore what I'm going to say. Um, there are those people that no matter what they do, they do we, they will not lose the weight. And sometimes they don't even gain the weight. And that's called, they slide into this set point thing where they, let's say it's, uh, I don't know, 150 pounds. They can't get below it no matter what. And it's frustrating. And um, you know, usually female, and it's like, oh, wow, my, why is my husband losing weight? I can't. And there's a lot of protests with that because they, they're eating good foods most of the time, and they shouldn't have to work so darn hard. You know, mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. <laughs> I, I'm living the dream. <laughs> so if you have this situation, um, you, you know, don't, whatever you do, don't, um, you know, make a decision when you're under stress mode. Like, uh, I think I'm just going to go back to my brownies, whatever, or go back to what I did before. What you want to do is you want to just sit back and, you know, just take a breather and go, okay, <clears throat> what, what's causing this problem? There's something behind it. And the real problem is the set point. And the set point is a problem with insulin resistance. You have severe insulin resistance, okay? And that's the situation where you know, the worst thing to do at that point is to um, go back to your old ways because if you just understand what insulin resistance is, then you can handle it. The number one biggest tool to just completely resolve this thing is, in, um, is intermittent fasting, okay? But the problem is that the way that you know you really have insulin resistance 
is you can't go for a long period of time without being hungry. That's like the biggest indicator. It's nothing else but that one symptom. So we have a, a situation where to be able to get rid of in, um, uh, insulin resistance, you have to do intermittent fasting, but you can't because you're hungry too frequently. You're always hungry, and that's, that's the big hallmark, um, the symptom of that. So what do you do, Karen? What do you do if you have insulin resistance and you can't go long because you're always hungry, but the only way to really fix it, even more importantly than keto, is intermittent fasting. What do you do? As you were focusing on my question. You That's just... A good question, right? That was a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things you can do is just go past the hunger. Yeah, you could do that. You could eat a little more fat. Thank you. That was, I was looking for that. I was fishing for that. And you gave okay. me the right answer. Good job, Karen. All right. Um, so more fat. Now, I know people are going to go, wait a sec, wait a second, Dr. Bird, that's conflicting because you said if you eat more fat, you're going to burn your dietary fat and I'm not going to burn my own fat. I understand that. But our goal, our first goal is not to lose weight. It's to fix insulin resistance first. So then you can maybe fast longer and really fix your actually underlying problem. Okay, so that's, so forget about the weight loss. Forget about long-term healthy habits. Just focus on one thing and that is to be able to fast longer so you can correct insulin resistance, keep your carbs low for sure, and then you're going to see you'll bust through that uh, set point. So that was tip number one. Okay, we'll, we'll get into more things, but I think that was, I don't know, I think that was good advice myself. Let's go to Lewis from uh, Minnesota. Are you there? Yes, I'm there. Thank you. Hi. You had a question. Hello? Hello. Hi. Yes, I do. Actually, yeah, actually, the, the question is for my fiancé. Yep. So she's been having this skin problem for uh, more than seven months now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been on keto for uh, over a year. Okay. Now, we do you approve keto. Um, we have a keto, keto module at home and have blood sugar with, between, uh, with low 60s, and mostly low 60s, and her, and her ketones are between three and four most of the time. We do fasting 18 to 20 hours daily. And then she also did a prolong. She also was doing prolonged fasting um, twice a month, 40, or 40 hours plus. But she was losing too much weight, so she stopped doing that. Okay. Now we also take your nutritional his uh, wheat grass, electrolytes, uh, D3 and K2. Yeah. Uh, we also take uh, uh, the virgin organic olive oil, and then okay. sometimes eat either salmon or sardine for our omega threes. Okay. Um, so now this this is this, this is the skin problem. So when it first started, it started as a, as a, it started with keto rash and dark spots. Yeah. So following your advice, because I called you before a couple of times. Yep. The, 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 the keto rash is gone, but this, the dark spots are there. Okay. Now she decided to go to a doctor. They gave her two creams, yeah. uh, hydro, hydroquinone. Yeah. And also, uh, so they gave her two creams, and then okay. it kind of helped, but she stopped, she stopped using them. Now she went to a, a, another dermatologist. Now she's doing some phototherapy okay. twice a week. It's helping a little bit, okay. but I mean, not much. The dark spot is still there. So pretty much I'm trying to find out, I mean, okay. what can we do next? And then some other weird thing that is happening just recently is um, she, started, she started having swollen feet, even though she has low sugar and high ketones. I don't know where, how that is possible. Okay. So I'm just trying to see if you can So help let's let's talk about anyway. that. Um, so you're from Minnesota, the land of 10,000 mosquitoes, which is really close to Wisconsin, where I'm from. So you have a lot of mosquitoes there. Um, so here's here's a couple things. Um, when you said the swelling in the feet, um, usually it's low potassium and magnesium and electrolytes. Uh, but if you're having a lot of elect uh, electrolytes and you still have swelling in the feet, there is one thing that can do it, and it's usually vitamin B1 deficiency. Um, now you already. I'm guessing you're. You took my suggestion with vitamin B2, which is usually the keto rash. But if you're taking all these nutrients and doing everything right and you're still having a problem, there's another um, reason why you might have this problem. And I'm going to talk about this at the summit. So I hopefully, hopefully you can show up um, next at the end of this month. Mm -hmm. it's, um, one of the talks I'm going to um, deliver is on absorption, which is very interesting. 
Um, and a couple reasons why you can't absorb is, number one, you have some gut problems, and you don't have those little villi that help you absorb. But then another reason why you can't absorb is you have a um, kind of a defect of one of your genes, um, which is a whole new topic. And so you may have um, a gene for a certain B vitamin, like folic acid, that you're not able to pull it in anymore. I'm going to be releasing a video on the folic acid, which I think you should probably look into that because it could be a little genetic thing that you might just need the right type of B vitamin, B vitamins, and then I show you what to do. Um, but stay tuned for more on that. But um, I think her problem is related to folic acid. So I'll release that in two days. All right? Thank you for calling. Karen? <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. Okay, so did you have a question? I have a bunch of questions. Good. I also want to mention that people are watching from Canada, the United Arab Emirates, and Italy. And wow. We love Italy. Well, do you know what? What? We are going to do, um, do something in uh, several months that we're going to basically go to different countries and film and do the whole food thing. So we'll, we'll talk more about what countries we're going to go to, but I think I would love to be able to you know, one thing you actually research what someone eats, but unless you go there in the country and you check it out and you see firsthand, you don't know. Right. So we have to have to go see it for ourselves. Yeah. I agree. What was your question? Okay, good. So uh, I have a lot of questions, so it's okay yeah. if you don't go into big detail. These guys are asking lots of questions. Can okay. you do keto when you're pregnant? You especially need to do keto. I mean. Well, if you do a high carb um, diet when you're pregnant, you are um, at risk of developing insulin resistance and even gestational diabetes, which mm -hmm. then the child is more at risk of getting diabetes. So you do not want to do high carbs if you're pregnant. Uh, the only thing you might want to watch out for is the intermittent fasting. You probably don't want to do that, but definitely healthy keto for sure. Very but important. The, what the mother eats when she's pregnant will basically determine that, the future health of that child. Right. But now when you say no intermittent fasting, sometimes we, we tell people that intermittent fasting just means no snacking between meals. So if, if a woman is pregnant, she's eating three meals a day, that's, yeah. that's fine, right? Yeah. You wouldn't want her snacking all day long and spiking insulin all day long. Well, here's the thing. I, I don't want to get into specifics simply because if, let's say, for example, I said uh, three meals, no snacking, and all of a sudden she's like craving some, something and, and she wants to eat like celery or whatever, I'm not going to say not to do that because, you know, what if she needs something? So I okay. think to keep it uh, very, very clean, I'm just going to say, you know what? Just focus on healthy keto right now. That's all I'm saying, Karen. And eat, when you need to eat when you need to eat. Thank you. Okay, good. Well, that's a good point. All right, so can you take the hair formula and the trace minerals together? Yeah, that would enhance more of the trace minerals to enhance the hair formula for sure because these trace minerals are essential, not necessarily in boosting your energy, but your proteins. They allow proteins to, another topic I'm gonna talk about at this summit, which is fascinating. Well, that gives me, that, that makes, that brings up another question. Yeah. So a lot of times you have people who wanna build muscle mass, right? Yeah, right. Or heal, and right. we talk a lot about proteins and how to get proteins, but what you're saying, so maybe it's a trace mineral issue. Absolutely. These trace minerals and certain vitamins are the keys that make these proteins work. And I'm talking about not just muscle or nail or hair, but I'm talking about enzymes, hormones, uh, things that repair things like DNA, like all that stuff. Every, every body tissue you have is mainly proteins. And these proteins are magical, magical machinery that swim, they rotate, they unzip like a zipper, they walk, they build. I mean, it's fascinating. Fascinating. It's like, and I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna cover that with video animation um, at the summit. And I'm spending basically six months on this one talk. Mm -hmm. So it's good. It's gonna be good. I can. I don't doubt it. You can only imagine. Right? No, I can't imagine. Okay, so here's another one. Uh, I think yeah. it's Gabrielle. Yeah. Um, she has diarrhea every time she's done fasting. So she fasts, and then I'm assuming she eats. Yeah. What, what's what I think the best thing to do is, um, I have a video on this, so you want to go into it 
just very slowly. When you come off fasting, it's better to have just a real small little food because your system is like, it's not really used to not eating it yet, you know, so it has to be able to go back and forth. So have the smallest, maybe just one egg or something for a while and then add something else. Mm. Don't do this huge big, big meal because meal. Mm. your system's like, whoa, and then it just dumps everything. I see. Yeah. All right. Uh, one more here. Oh, actually, I have three more. Uh, can I do intermittent fasting and then still eat moderately healthy? Um, you mean like I have a video on the sort of, I'm, I'm sort of doing I'm keto? It's sort of keto. The, here's the problem with that. Um, keto is basically an all or nothing thing. When you do a sort of keto, it bumps you out of keto. That's the problem. So there's a certain limit of carbs that you can do. But now you said something one time that if you could only do one thing, that intermittent fasting would be yeah. better. Right. right. There's levels of importances, but you still need to do both. I'm not saying um, it's, it's like it's the only thing you should do. You should, like, because if you don't eat, I'm fasting. Okay, well, you eventually you have to come to food, you know, but it's just a little more important than keto. Mm. It really is. Because if you okay. do keto, even if it's healthy keto, and you're eating keto bombs all day long, and all this fat, okay. and all this stuff, and you, you like, you're still going to raise insulin. You're still going to raise it every time you eat, regardless of what you eat. Mm -hmm. So it's better, but it's intermittent fasting is like a really important thing. It's it's um, what it can do for your your system. Okay. Okay. Good. So let's go to um, Rochelle from Chicago. Are you there? I am. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Hi. Oh, it is so exciting to talk to you and Karen. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for everything you're doing. Um, yeah. I wanted to first share with you how you've helped me. Um, I have no, no disease issues or anything like that, but mm -hmm. what I wanted to do is I wanted to solve wild weight swings that I had. Mm -hmm. And what I had done was I had done Ideal Protein, and I got great success with a lot of fat loss, but it never sat right with me, the processed foods. Right. And then after time, what happened was I got very low vitamin D and high platelets. And um, ultimately, I wanted something that would solve the weight swings. Um, and what I found with that, it wasn't satisfying. It wasn't the lifestyle. So hence, I found keto and IF, and I had been doing that on and off, but I had never gotten the success that I had with Ideal Protein until I found you. Wow. And the key for me, the key for me was um, what I call internet keto versus your healthy keto. Okay. So the, the two critical things for me was um, the cruciferous vegetables and then slightly lowering my protein. And the amount of prote protein that you recommend, say 50 to 65 grams, you know, was like half of what I was doing on Ideal Protein. Wow. So anyways, I just wanted to share, you know, it, I, I just can't thank you enough for everything you've done for me. I'm solving, you know, I don't know what the health detriments are to yo-yo dieting, you know, wild weight swings, 40, 50, 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, common sense tells me that's not a good thing. Right. And so um, so I just wanted to thank you for your help there. You're welcome. And, uh, and now to my question. Um, I have read... Um, in another source that women need insulin to make uh, our, our hormones, estrogen, progesterone, maybe testosterone. And so it was recommended to carb load. I know you don't recommend carb loading. And so I was wondering what your thoughts are on this. Is it we're getting enough insulin just by how, you know, whether we're eating one meal a day or two meals a day and you know, through, say, 50 to 60 grams of protein? Um, Good question. So what are your thoughts about the idea of carb loading? Good question. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say with the ideal protein thing, the, the quality of protein, I mean, the low, one thing about ideal protein is it's very low fat, and that makes the, protein, the powder protein uh, very irritating to your liver, and so it creates a lot of issues. So that would be another point. And, um, but Getting to your question, I think that um, um, when, and this is a confusion people have, people think that if I'm doing keto, I'm dropping my insulin down to zero or something like that. No, 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 no. You're, you're just bringing it to normal. 
normal levels, you're not bringing it excessively down to a point where it's below where it should be normally. It's not going to do that. It just doesn't, your pancreas just doesn't have to work so hard to pump out all this massive amount of insulin. Um, now, insulin is what's called a uh, an anabolic hormone. So it, it actually makes things. It makes proteins and things like that. It contributes to the synthesis of proteins, muscle hormones, things like that, certain hormones like the thyroid hormone, which is um, uh, made out of proteins. Insulin is even made out of protein. Um, and other hormones, you have steroid hormones, are made out of cholesterol. Um, so you do need the protein, but it's false information that we need a carbo load to improve hormones. Um, if you have a blood sugar problem or insulin resistance, when you carbo load, you're going to feel better initially. But the real um, thing for, um, that, to support a female series of the endocrine system and all the hormones is um, a, a real high quality types of fats that you eat that will support the hormone system and definitely not lowering the cholesterol. And I'm talking about the salmon, I'm talking about the cod of oil, I'm talking about seafood, and also high quality proteins um, from fish and healthy meats and, and wild caught and definitely eggs for sure. Eggs are the top thing. Um, but it's not the carbs. The carbs um, is, is not what's behind the, the manufacturing of hormones. And there's no data out there that you can find in any physiology book that shows that these hormones need carbs at all. So it's, it's just false, completely false information. Um, and no one, can, I mean, I'm just keep waiting for someone to give me the reference and, or really the physiology, and they can't, can't do that. The, the thing is like um, low calorie diets with deficiencies of nutrients, that will create a problem with female body. But if you keep, go up with the fat and have high quality protein, you don't need the carbo load. Thanks for your question. Tracy, you're from California. You had a question. How to increase stomach acidity, right? Yeah. Um, I want to offer my thanks and warm wishes to you and your whole Dr. Berg family of support. Um, yeah, I, I suffer from the intense stress, uh, which led to the demise of my mom in January of this year. And I'm struggling to repair and, and maintain some balance. So my questions to you are relative to the acidity of the stomach. I wanted to ask, um, is it necessary to take, uh, well, I drink apple cider vinegar um, regularly throughout the day because um, I know stress causes the alkaline stomach. So when I do take, um, when I drink the kale shake or um, the wheatgrass uh, juice powder and the electrolyte powder, I'm wondering, are those alkaline to the stomach? Um, like you said, lemon juice and, uh, and the electrolyte powders that are alkaline to the stomach. And you said, was it one other thing? Yeah, I drink the apple cider, yeah, I drink the apple cider vinegar with lemon juice um, okay. pretty much throughout the day. Okay. So I'm wondering, yeah. Okay. So it's okay. Um, these are good questions. It's totally okay to um, do the electrolyte powder, which is alkaline, um, vegetables, which are alkaline, and um, of course the uh, apple cider, the lemon is acidic. It's citric acid, but it actually turns alkaline after about an hour, believe it or not. And then also apple cider vinegar is extremely acid, so that'll counter that. I think. If you're concerned about this, or and I don't even think if you're concerned or not, I think that um, it's very, very important on a regular basis to take something called betaine hydrochloride. It is in my digest formula, but you can get it separately if you want. But the betaine hydrochloride gives you the chlorides to build the HCl, which is vital, 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 vital um, to help you digest proteins. Now, when you eat like meat and eggs, it goes in the stomach. Your, your stomach acid is between one and three. That's where it needs to be. If it's not, it doesn't break the bonds of these amino acids. So you get this incomplete di uh, the protein digestion and ends up with a lot of problems further down into the tract. The, what normally should happen is you break down the protein, break these bonds, and it starts to break down into smaller um, molecules, and it gets absorbed into the intestine, the small intestine. But a lot of that protein should not end up in the large bowel. 
should just be completely absorbed and then break down to the small particles of amino acids and you rebuild it back up. So hydrochloric acid is important in that and also killing viruses and microbes uh, and absorbing minerals. But to build up your stomach acid, you need other things too, like zinc, which comes from seafood. You need iodine, you need potassium, you need magnesium. These are also really important into maintaining good stomach acid. So those alkaline minerals I have will also help build up your stomach acid as well. Good questions. Karen, we're yeah. ready for another question if you have one. Good, yeah, these guys are awesome. Okay, I have a bunch of questions. So first of all, can you take the chocolate kale shake on keto diet? Yeah, as long as it's at a meal. It's, it's, it's meant to as an enhancement. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Or dessert. Or dessert. What about watermelon? Well, I did a video on that. Don't, I mean, okay, so if you have a small amount of watermelon and it's within your carbs, you want to count those, I don't have a problem with that. But just realize that if you're struggling with weight, it, is, it does have some sugar in it. So, you know, got to watch that. It's so tempting in the summer. Yeah, I mean, you could try a little bit. Um, just, I mean, if you eat a whole watermelon, it might spike your blood sugars. <laughs> But it's interesting because um, the watermelon, if you juice the rind, um, boy, you wake up in the morning, if you have fluid retention, all that fluid retention is gone, completely gone. So if you eat watermelon, your fluid retention is gone, you say? The rind, if oh, you the juice rind. the rind. So not the... Because well, it has a little bit of sugar. Okay. And that sugar that it has is fructose sugar. Mm. So. Even though fructose will not s spike your blood sugars, it's going to go to the liver and create a fatty problems. Liver. Yeah, it will. And this is the confusion that people say, oh, I eat fruit, it doesn't increase my blood sugar. Yeah, but your, the fructose has a different pathway, and it's dealing with all this extra sugar. So it creates a problem. So it's not all about, oh, blood sugar. Interesting. All right. Well, that, that throws a wrench into some people's, like, Reliable, stable principles. Principles. Yeah, I know. I'm but sorry. It's okay. It's good to know. Okay, so several people on Facebook and um, YouTube are asking about hot flashes. So, um, can you just talk about hot flashes, reducing hot flashes, m surviving menopause? I know you've done videos, but. <coughs> yeah, um, and a real quick thing the adrenals are backing up the ovaries, and so. Your adrenals are weak going into menopause. Um, you're susceptible to getting uh, this wave of heat. And, there's the, and then I'm not going to get into why because I did videos on this, but there's a couple things you can do. Um, and it's you can increase progesterone because that's the one that's really, really low compared to estrogen. And you can also do flax oil. Um, that will help you. Um, and then you can also do iodine okay, in sea kelp. That seems to help a lot of women with hot flashes. Um, and um, there's a lot more to more on that. I would just suggest watch the video because I don't, I'm, I'm like tempted to go into the whole mm. axis and explain it, but why, not, why, why do video. that if it's just it's watch the, the video. video? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, while we're on the subject of estrogen, um, can you touch on estrogen dominance? Someone I was on YouTube, I'm sorry I didn't get your name loves your video on estrogen dominance and metabolic disease. I yeah. just wanted you to say a little bit more about that. Well, <coughs> estrogen dominance is really common because of all the chemicals in the environment mimic estrogen. So you got the pesticides, insecticides, heavy metals, country and western. I that was a bad joke. So you have all these different things that mimic um, estrogen, but also um, dairy products. If they're not um, if you do too many dairy products and you're already estrogen dominant, that can really make you more estrogen dominant, uh, unless you live in a country like Mongolia, which has a lot higher quality milk. You know, Mongolia, Karen, they actually, when they milk these cows, first of all, they take the milk um, like six months before they get pregnant. Like in America, we, like it's all year round, they're milking these cows. So you're basically getting milk from the previous <laughs> pregnancy and they're, they're pumping out like nine gallons of milk compared to Mongolia, which is only 1.7 uh, um, gallons. So um, there's a lot less estrogen if you live in those countries that it's more natural. 
in America that you're getting a lot of estrogen. So if you're doing like cheese, for example, and it's just processed cheese, and you're thinking, and the problem, what gets you is at the restaurants, because they're not doing you know, grass-fed, organic. And also, the, the type of milk, like if you do goat's cheese or um, sheep cheese, it's so much better. And European cheese is so much better. But um, the regular cheese, I'm sorry, it creates some issues with estrogen. Mm. Now, I, I said something and I'm really stuck on. Go ahead. That in Mongolia, they, they get milk from cows six months before they're pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. I have a simple mind. So I don't have any milk until I'm pregnant. Is that, cows is are that different. Cows are different. You oh, can cows actually are different? Cow, yeah, you can actually. Wow, I never knew yeah, that. Yeah, in between pregnancies. They, they can so actually, before they are even pregnant, they produce milk, yeah. and you can milk them. Yeah. Everybody knew that. Everybody <laughs> knew that but me. Okay, well, I found that very interesting. And I'm, I'm fascinated that you know so much about the milk in Mongolia. This is something you never It's an area that I want to go to eventually, me. and I want to just sample their cheese. Um, so... That's awesome. Yeah, I, I want to I wanna go there. That's definitely a, a place to go if you want to keep your estrogen in, in check. In check. Good. Well, one more Do question. Do we have anyone from Mongolia? I, I was just going to ask. I haven't seen anyone from Mongolia, but now's the time. If you're from Mongolia and you're watching, let me know. Well, while you're doing that, I need to, I need to come back to my stubborn weight loss topic. We're talking about tips. Okay. And so there's a couple of more tips. Number one. Please, please do not um, get your information from people that are, are not really credible. And what I mean by that is uh, credibility, meaning some people that get re really good results, uh, versus, oh, I have a certificate. I have a certain diploma in this credential. When you do Google searches and Dr. Google, and you're trying to find true inf health information, the way they rank it is not necessarily on truthful information. It's based on credible, you know, how many degrees you get, whatever, and so you have these sites that are credible, but I'm reading this stuff, the first two or three or four pages of Google, and I'm like, wow, this is what people are putting out there. It's not the correct information. So just realize, be careful about where you get your information. Um, like, when people say, well, I've heard that, well, okay, where did you hear that? Well, from a neighbor. I read it from some magazine. Like, okay, well, where do you think that, I saw it on the internet. You just have to be careful where you acquire your information. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a tip number one. And then the other, and the other thing is, you know, what we run into the most is people are doing that and it's not working. Right. So that's your second test. If if you if you do find that and you use it and it's not working, then just be really quick to know that. And, and it's different too. Some people think that healthy keto is not working, but as an example, we spoke to someone. We know somebody who had some issues, and maybe they're not losing weight, but they're sleeping for the first time. So you're, you are going to see positive results, but if you see nothing, that's your tip. Just realize there's a way to fix anything. And instead of giving up, just keep looking for that piece. And uh, that's one thing I try to do on the videos, is I try to give other pieces. The problem is just finding some of these pieces in 3,500 videos. But the next thing I want to say, mm -hmm. Karen, is that here's another tip. And this is an important one. If you're trying to um, handle your stubborn weight problem and you have some other health problems sitting on the side, fix that first. Because mm. I did talk to someone on the phone recently and, they, and the thing that really threw them off was their menstrual cycle. Two weeks, very, very heavy, and they just blew up like a balloon and it just threw them off. I'm like, okay, guess what? That is totally going to interfere with your ability to lose weight. So. And of course, the keto bombs that she was eating were all dairy. So she needs to replace the dairy fat with something like coconut oil or something like that or, or nuts. So we can go non-dairy to fix the cycle. So there's, like you just need to know these relationships. And, um, but that's very important. Okay, what other health problem? It could be some inflammatory, like the gal that had the, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Well, okay, well you need a lot of vitamin D and you need to watch my intermittent fasting videos. All the autoimmune diseases, which RA is one of them. You know, watch my videos on that. Number two, could be a sleep disorder. Okay, we'll fix that for sure. Or you have a thyroid problem or a digestive problem. Those are things that are going to stop you. Fix that, come back to the weight, it's going to help you. Trust me. You're a doctor. <laughs>
Okay, so Sherry, are you there, Sherry? You had a question. Yes, I am. Oh, great. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hi, yes, hi. doctor. Um, hi. Um, I was diagnosed earlier this year with uh, prediabetes with an A1C of 6.4, which, as far as I'm concerned, is diabetes. Um, so I started really working on this with keto about May. <clears throat> I've been doing fairly well, and I started to do some extended fasting because I wanted to see how low I could bring my glucose down. Mm -hmm. I am eating to my meter. I follow your advice with um, keto. I can't eat more than 20 carbs, uh, so I get between 10 and 20 carbs. Um, I even count my, my vegetables. Um, mm -hmm. What I found was the first 48-hour fast I did, uh, my glucose went down to like 76 or something like that. Mm -hmm. I've done a couple more since then and recently a four-day. What I'm noticing is on the last two extended fasts I've done, the sugar, or the glucose, tends to go up the longer I am fasting. Mm -hmm. And it's just really confusing to me. When I say go up, the highest number I've seen is like 109. And it's like, what? I, I don't yeah. get it. Um, yeah. Good, good. Is that, yeah. This is a great question. You just gave me another idea for a video, but let me explain why that is, okay? Like, how could your blood sugars go up when you're not eating any sugar or any food? It doesn't make sense, right? Well, guess what? Your body makes sugar, and it's called gluconeogenesis, and your liver is making the sugar. And um, why is it making the sugar? Because it needs a little bit of sugar, but the fact that it's higher than it should be is nothing you have to worry about other than realize that <coughs> your liver is still in a transition phase. It could be something going on like with more, it could be some fat in the liver. It could be um, you're still still in the insulin resistance stage where your, your system is still, still has a problem with that and your body has to overcompensate because <coughs> let's say for example, you're, when you do keto or IF, your blood sugars, uh, your insulin comes down, but if you still have insulin resistance, your body is going to uh, not necessarily get the right signals, and it could overcompensate and make a little more sugar. Uh, this is nothing to worry about. It's not coming. It's not going to create damage. Um, but over time, that will improve. It just means that your system is still in, in transition mode, and it's still correcting something. The thing you could do to get rid of that extra, extra glucose is go exercise and just burn it off, and I think you'll be fine. Good question. I will be creating a video on this. Hey, Mike, you're from Central Washington State. You had a question about baby aspirin, right? Yes, um, I, I wanted to get your opinion on taking baby aspirin uh, to prevent preeclampsia. Okay, so uh, this is a great question um, that I just want to just tell you. I can't tell you not to take it or to take it because it's beyond my scope, but I'm I just going to give you my opinion on it. Um, it does thin the blood, okay, for sure. There are other things that are natural blood thinners. I have done videos on this. Um, one is vitamin E and one is fish oil. Um, but if you're talking about preeclampsia, you need to watch my videos on that. I've done videos on that and do some research into vitamin B1 deficiencies, thiamine deficiencies in um, toxemia from pregnancy and also preeclampsia. Um, that's a vitamin B1 deficiency. And um, I think you're going to find some fascinating data on that. And um, if you can take enough B1 when you're pregnant, um, you can actually really improve that problem. Thanks, Mike. Karen, I think we're ready for a question, if you have yeah, one. Yeah, I do. I do. Cindy on Facebook says that she can tolerate apple cider vinegar, no problem. But when she has lemon juice, she gets heartburn. Why would that be? Um, well. I think because lemon juice does turn into, that I think her, she has what's called alkalosis. She's a little bit too alkaline. And if you take, if you're already bordering on too alkaline and you take lemon or any type of um, citrus, mm -hmm. it turns into alkalinity in your body and you'll feel like worse. You might feel achy joints, you might get a little allergy, you might have a little acid thing going on. Hmm. So that's really what's going on behind that. Interesting. So the acid in a citrus like lemon turns alkaline. Yeah, it does after about an hour because it Who burns into an alkaline ash type substance. 
Um, but I think what we should do, mention um, the summit. And I want to tell you guys, okay. and we're running down to like at the end of the month already, and I know a lot of you are already coming, and I can't wait, we can't wait to meet you. But also, a lot of you are on the edge that you need to, and we need to push you over the edge <laughs> to come because the amount of knowledge you're going to get from this is going to literally knock your socks off. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to be two, doing two talks. We have um, Dr. Um, Westman's coming, Jackie Eberstein, Thomas DeLauer is coming, Arthur Cummins. Cummins is coming, Dr. Mercola. Dr. Mercola is coming, two cardiologists. Logan Sneed, um, Ben Bickman is coming. He's the professor at Brigham Young, and also um, um, a doctor, naturopathic doctor, Padaguana. Yes. Na Nadina. Na uh, Nadia. Nadia Padaguana. She's coming. She's going to talk about infertility. So it's going to be pretty it's be cool event, and we are just probably nearly running out of rooms by at this point mm -hmm. because we have we are having a some logistical issues I'm having to go to the hotel and rework the space which is really exciting we're re we're really happy about that but we're, I'm having to go back and juggle the chairs and things like that it's going to be really 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 hot and if you if you like this platform and you like to tune into dr. Berg and you like to watch the videos you want to be at this summit because last year we didn't have cardiologists a lot of people ask about heart situations and things like that. These guys can answer those questions. This is their, their realm, and they deal 100% with keto. And um, Jackie Eberstein, is, uh, she's worked with women through all stages of everything. She was voted probably the, the favorite uh, seminar last year just because of how real and how applicable her, her advices were to, to life. Um, Thomas DeLauer, we get a lot of people asking about building a body and fitness and weight training and things like that, and he's really the guy on the internet for that mm -hmm. and keto. And why don't we give away a ticket? That's such a great idea. Okay, we'll give away a VIP ticket. Yeah. Okay. So if you're interested. If you're interested, uh, just type yes, I want to come. And only do it if you really are going to, if you think you really would definitely come. Uh, yes, I'm going to come, your name, and then where you're from. So. Yeah. And then we'll select. San Diego. We'll select one and. Um, Before um, the end of the show. Yep. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be hot. It's going to be the 31st of, and if, if you want more information, just go to drbird.com. There's a big old button at the top. You check it out yeah. and, get, and uh, get set up. A lot but of people are coming for the whole weekend because it's. I think it's funny. It's Labor, Labor Day weekend. weekend. It starts in August this year, which is right. Yeah. Uh, Labor Day usually that's in the first weekend of September. So any maybe that's the first weekend of September. Labor Day, a lot of people are coming for four days, five days. They're going to enjoy the hotel. DC is awesome that time of year. This time of year, and it's actually I don't know about three weeks from now because it's three weeks from now. Yeah, it's, time is a run a ticket. But it's it is so. beautiful right now in DC. Yeah, Elizabeth, you're you've been waiting for fifty four minutes, so mm. I am ready for your question. You're from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Go ahead. Hello. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted first of all, I want to thank you for all the information I've been gathering. I've been with you for over a year. Oh, great! And I've lost all the weight. I've lost all the weight that I want to lose. Wow! Which came down to 110 pounds. Wow! And I, I've been doing. I, I haven't. Been, I haven't been measuring, but I've been doing healthy keto with mostly uh, everything organic and grass-fed beef and stuff. And I feel fine, except now, suddenly, the last few weeks, I've been getting, um, not exactly bloated, but for the first time in my life, I seem to be semi-constipated. Mm. And I've been eating an awful lot of uh, fresh salad. I've been eating more than about 10 cups, mostly fresh kale and, you know, other lettuces and things. 
So I don't know if I should cut out down on the kale. Is it possible to have too much kale? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Because um, I ran into that too. I, I, I just said, well, I'm just going to take it to the next level. If, uh, if a moderate amount is good, more is better. So the, think about um, all that fiber in kale is a different type of fiber than lettuce leaf. It's in romaine, it's, it's uh, more hearty. And those fibers do not get broken down until they end up in the large intestine. So they got to travel um, like, I don't know, 18 feet, 18 feet. So they have to kind of get through all that stuff. So if you're doing this huge bolus of fiber, it has to go all the way down until the microbes finally get a chance to break it down. And you may not necessarily have the capacity to do it. So you might want to back off, slowly increase it over time. But the thing with kale, if you do a lot of it too much, just make sure you take some sea kelp for the iodine to counter any potential depletion of iodine. But yeah, I think, I think you basically just have a little too much kale. Um, and it's a different type of vegetable. Like if I do too much of a cruciferous, um, I might have to steam it. And I mean, you're probably doing it raw. So, um, so you might want to switch it up, do more of a salad for a while, and then um, kind of ease into it. Thanks so much, Elizabeth, for your wonderful comments. And uh, keep going. All right, and um, let's see. I need to just talk to Chris from New Mexico. Are you there, Chris? Yes, I'm here. Oh, great. You had a question. Yeah, so I'm, I've been doing uh, keto for about uh, four years. Uh, I like the coin phrase that I heard a little while ago, internet keto. <laughs> and then I ran across your uh, protocols um, around February the end of February and I started implementing your protocols and then started implementing intermittent fasting and, and started losing the weight that I, I wanted to lose. Um, I'm down to around 204 pounds. So I've lost around 40 pounds Good. and, um, I, but I have not lost anything in my waist. You know, I, I, I can feel it in my, you know, my pants, I can feel it in, uh, uh, my shirts, but my belly, I haven't lost any, any, uh, size in my belly. Um, I do a lot of exercise, because I'm a, I'm a wrestling coach, and so I'm, all, I'm, I'm three days a week I'm in the wrestling room. Um, I still go to the, the gym and stuff like that, but still cannot lose any size or uh, see any change in my belly. Um, any suggestions? Um, <clears throat> yes. Um, are you, are you, how, how frequent are you doing intermittent fasting? Um, I do intermittent fasting at least two to three days a week. Okay. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I can go all the way down to just one meal a day, um, and I, I, I try to stay within the the, um, the seventy percent uh, fat range. Okay. And are you finding that you're able to go longer and longer without being hungry? Yes. Do you ever eat when you're not hungry? Um, not usually. Okay. I I, I don't have a snack. I, I was able to get rid of the snacking and. Um, get rid of, get rid of all the desired needs that I, that was causing me to want to eat. So, well, great. So let me just kind of I'll give you a couple tips and uh, love that you're a wrestling, wrestling coach. Uh, that's something that I would I personally would just love to do uh, as a side if I had a little more time because um, I was a wrestler as well. But um, here's what you do: um, just realize that it, it is working, but you probably there could be more fat in the liver. The body will go after the a fatty liver before it goes after the midsection. Uh, you want to speed that, that up. What you have to do is you have to do more strict intermittent fasting. And so you might want to, it's even better if you actually go up with your fats and uh, be consistent at OMAD every single day of the week. Uh, the exercise is definitely going to, especially wrestling, is going to sp speed up everything. But as far as the belly goes, if you want to get that thing off quick, I would go even I would go OMAD every single day of the week, and then I would do maybe two of those days, I would go every other day. Yeah, one meal. And what will happen, it will just speed things up, and you will lose your stomach, because that's just what a lot of people need uh, to speed it up. So, but that's, unfortunately, some people, they lose the stomach as the last thing, but it will come off. And that, that just reminds me that our friend, Liz, was saying just last night, yeah. She was on keto okay. 
for a year yeah. and three months mm -hmm. on keto. And the stomach did not budge. And she did not lose any weight. Now, her, her blood pressure, or her diabetes. Uh, diabetes, her blood sugar was off the charts. Over 200? It's like down to like... No, she told me yesterday it's been normal for two months. Yeah. Totally normal. It was over 200. Yeah, it was, it was over 200. So here's an individual who had a ton of weight to lose, uh, but she had a lot of metabolic issues. Yeah. And she was, you know, oh, I need to lose the weight. But she had huge metabolic issues on keto for over a year. And the body was really, really healing. Now her blood sugars are normal. She changed to OMAD. Yeah, one meal a day. Boom. Yeah. She started, now she's down 17 pounds. And yep, that's yeah. what you need to do. Some people honestly need to go one meal every other day. And that's really for people that have really bad insulin resistance. But just realize, I mean, this, you know, the, our bodies were not designed to eat every single day. Um, we're, we're way back, we basically ate when we had food, and we, it was like all over the place. So some days we ate three times a day, and other days we didn't eat for two days. So our bodies are designed for that. Um, let's go to Vicki. Okay. She's from Arizona. Gilbert, are you there, Vicki? Yes. You had an interesting question. Hello? hello? Go ahead. What's your interesting question? I, hello. Hello? Um, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. Can you hear us? Um, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Uh, yes, very well, thank you. I, I only just woke up because I, my voice sounds like I'm a guy, but <laughs> anyway, I'm 64 years old and I've been doing intermittent fasting for almost a year. Awesome. And the, and the issue you just covered is answers a lot of questions, but my question was, um, when I'm doing my fasting, if, if I brush my teeth or do the coconut oil pulling, will that interfere with my ketosis? Will that knock me out of ketosis? Absolutely, positively, no. It will not affect your ketosis at all. Um, there's not enough calories to go, you know, with that small amount. I would not worry about it. I would say uh, use a, a natural toothpaste, not the conventional ones um, that actually have sugar right, in them, right. some of them. But, I make um, my own. Oh, good. Perfect. Yeah, don't worry about it. You can do the the oil pulling, coconut oil, not a problem. Um, go for it. Okay. I appreciate your answer. I couldn't find it anywhere on the Internet. I know. I'll have to do I'll do a video on that for you. So, but, cool. yeah, awesome. Thank you. We'll, okay. we'll see you. Okay. Well, I didn't pick a winner. What? You picked two. I can't okay. help myself. I picked two winners. I picked okay, one from ahead. Facebook and one from YouTube. So on YouTube, we have Torrance Donovan from New Mexico. Ding, ding. Congratulations. Torrance. And uh, on Facebook, I have Iris Colador. Colador. And she is from the Netherlands. Okay, great. So we have, uh, we actually, the people who've been buying tickets recently have been uh, from all over the place. More recently, everyone's waiting until August. So Iris and Torrance, what you're going to do is you are going to email someone by the name of Maria, and you're going to email Dr. Berg at drberg.com. She's going to get your information here that you sent, and she'll verify your ID and things like that, and she'll get you your VIP ticket. Yeah, and we're really looking forward to meeting all of you guys yeah. who are coming. It's going to be a blast. Can't wait. And uh, for those of you that are on the edge, we're going to push you over the edge. Push Come. Um, sign up and let's get your um, ticket actually mm -hmm. today so mm -hmm. we can get it all set up. It's really a great time because not only are you going to hear all these different speakers, but w one thing we didn't anticipate last year is what a network pe the, the attendees had built just on their own. I mean, people You're who meet had friends. That's right, meet and friends. Family, you'll meet family there too. <laughs> but it was just really cool to watch the attendees. Uh, build these networks of, of friends and people that they stayed in touch with and things like that. So, big support system. Awesome. Have a great okay. weekend, guys. We'll yep. see you next Friday. Friday again. Not Sunday. Have a good one. Okay, bye.